I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my sin, one discard his body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold him and not another. 
we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Opening prayer. How is everyone feeling? Show me a lot of things, taught me a lot of things. Like, I read the Bible a lot, but to see somebody actually do it was totally different. He was Christ. Christ was walking through Tracy. If y'all know Tracy, she was, she always cooked for everybody, cleaned for everybody. She was never selfish. If, if anybody needs anything, she'll give it up. And that's how our Messiah is. Please bow your heads. We're going to pray. Abba Yahweh, we just thank you for all things, Heavenly Father. We give you all glory and honor. We give you thanks. Even through the tribulations and the hard times, you still are king. You're the Holy One, the Holy One of Israel, the only one to be praised. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Abba Yahweh. Thank you for bestowing us up your word, Abi Yahweh. And most importantly, we just ask that you help us to walk in your commandments, Abi Yahweh, that you have laid before us, Abi Yahweh. You said, blessed are those that do your commandments, that they may inherit life, Abi Yahweh. So I just thank you all things for you have given unto me, Abi Yahweh. I thank you for the time that you let me have, Tracy, Abi Yahweh. And you let everybody get the taste of her goodness, Abi Yahweh. And that is your goodness, Abi Yahweh. And we know that she's going to rest in the grave, Abba. But the last day, you will raise her up. Through your power and your might, Abba Yahweh. All these things I am thankful for. In your son, Yeshua's name, I pray. Amen. As we mirror remain standing, as we sing the first song, Life is Sweet. Thank you. 
remain standing as the first and second reading by Isaiah Green. So this verse right here, uh, this is the one that's haunting me the most. It's uh, Isaiah 57. It says, The righteous perishes, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. And so I see Tracy's death as not a bad thing. Yahweh says he has pleasure in the death of his saints. His saints are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith in Jesus. Tracy was not taken away for a bad reason. She was taken away for the glory of the Most High. And this verse right here just lets me know everything is going to be okay. And everything is by his plan and his will and his might. So may y'all have blessing to the reading of this word. And most importantly, everybody do his word. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. At this time, we will have um, a message by Pastor Matthias Hill in Jesus' name. Pastor Matthias. Thank you, Brother Tony. Good morning again. Thank you for the one morning over this side. Good morning, everybody. Okay. I think that this side on my left or this side on my right to stand because while they were standing, you were sitting. The Bible said, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of the leadership and the membership of Holy Ghost Church in Esperanza, we extend our sincere condolences to the family of Tracy, to the husband, to the mom, to the dad, her siblings, and other friends and relatives of her. As we gather here this morning, not to really mourn, but as the husband said, to rejoice. As we, you look at your program, I think it says, as we celebrate, if I'm right, as we celebrate the life of Tracy, a life that was short-lived, a life that maybe, as I said last night, she had a whole future ahead of her. She had expectations, she had dreams, she had something that she wanted to accomplish maybe by a certain time. But because life is uncertain and death is sure, death met her at the age of 29. As I stand here this morning, I can grieve along with the family and I know how they feel. Because three weeks ago, I buried one of my sons. Ten months ago, I buried another one. And as I stand here this morning, I know what it is to have death come to you suddenly. Just like all of us or most of us, we don't know when death will come knocking at our door. The Bible reminds us it is appointed unto men once to die. Then comes the judgment. It doesn't matter who we are, what status we have in our lives, what, my, what amount of education we may have or, or the level of, of job we may have in our possession. We will die someday. You may be young and beautiful. You may be young and handsome. Or maybe even still up in age and still handsome and beautiful. But death will meet us someday. That's in a, that is an appointment we will not miss. You may miss a doctor's appointment. You may miss a dentist's appointment. You may miss a bank manager's appointment. But death we will not miss. Because that is an appointment that we all will face one day. But if we face it in Jesus Christ, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Church will not save you, as I said last night. 
The pastor will not save you, no matter how much he may love you, he will not save you. The priest can save you. Only Jesus is our savior of the world. See in John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh under the Father but by him. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the door. By which any man enter, the same shall be saved. And I want to mention to you in the same vein, before I forget, that there we either spend eternity in either place, either hell or heaven. The choices you make here upon the earth will determine where we spend eternity. As you heard the brother read from the scripture earlier, Jesus says, love your enemies. Do good to them and hate you. Pray for them who persecute you. Sometimes you live in our communities. I live in Esperanza. Sometimes we live in our communities and neighbors can't talk to the other neighbor on the other side. And we go to church. We read our Bibles, but we don't practice what we preach. So you're going to beware. Be not only a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. So what is being said today, or what will be said today, it's not for Tracy. Tracy is gone. But it's for you and I who are left here today. The mother, the father, the brother, the sister, the uncles, the aunts, the nephews, and so forth. Whatever relationship and friends. What will you do with your life that God has given to you up to now? What is your life? I, I asked the question last time. What is your life? The Bible says it's like a vapor. We, are, we see it right now and, it, and suddenly it is gone. I have read in the news, and maybe you read in the news, a man and his wife was murdered down in Billy's area. The neighbor saw him driving in to his yard and the vehicle driving out back. A couple of hours later, they found both of them dead. We got to live close to God. It's time that we as a people of Belize come back to God. I can't go to church because I know I catch COVID-19. So you find excuses not to come to church, but you don't find excuses for going to ball game. You don't find excuses for going to a casino. You don't find excuses for sitting around a big table with a big elephant foot with your friends. Let us come to realization and realize that we need God now more than ever. Time is important. Your life is important. Your life matters, my friend. Maybe not to me or to someone, but your life matters to God. Because your life matters to God, for John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I listen to Mr. Green. He says, we sit and we study the Bible. How many husbands and wives are there? Take time to study the Bible. Second Timothy 2 and 15 says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Many people are studying today because they want a, 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 an associate's degree. They want a master. They want a, a, a bachelor's degree. They want a master's degree. They want a PhD degree. But how about studying the word of God? This is important. You can have all the degrees like a thermometer. But after death, that doesn't matter. It is what we do for God we last. So as I go briefly into the word of God, I want us to stop for a while and hear what thus saith the Lord thy God. Matthew 4 and 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus spent 33 and a half years upon the earth Three years in his ministry, teaching and preaching. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. That is who we are preaching today here at this funeral. That is who we are preaching today to the family and friends of Tracy, Jesus Christ, and him who was crucified. But many people today say, I don't got no time. I don't got no time for that, that church business and that church thing. But when are you going to take time to die? Somebody says, have you any time for Jesus while the fleeting moments roll? Is your mortal life so busy 
that you cannot save your soul. Time for business, time for pleasure, time to go on in sin. But one day we must take time to die. One day Pastor Hill will die. One day you're going to have a state funeral for the Prime Minister. One day, praise God, whosoever you may know, they will die someday. I want us to realize that death is sure. We come knocking at everybody's door. He knocked at my door the 18th of July, 2020. He knocked at my door the 30th of April, praise God, 2021. He knocked, it knocked at Mr. Green's door a few days ago. When will he come knocking at your door? You better be ready. Time is running out for you. Time is running out for me. But I want to briefly look at the scripture if you have a Bible. From the book of St. John, chapter 11. A scripture that is very well versed, maybe to a lot of us. Maybe some of us sit here, used to go to Sunday school. Some of us are here, maybe used to go to church as an adult. But because Jesus takes too long, well, make a go there a little bit more and enjoy the world. The Bible says the devil come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus says, that, come here, you can have life. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. You can have life and have it more abundantly. But Jesus, as he walked through, or as he was about to go to Bethany, there was a, a death in the family of Mary and Martha, Lazarus. Just like how a death is in the family of the Vasquez and the Greens. A death will be in your family sometime, someday, somewhere. But as Mary and Martha, they were contemplating and they were pondering because their brother Lazarus had died. He was sick and he died. Let me tell you something today. You don't have to be sick to, to dead right away. You can walk right out of the road and say, knock you down. You can drive in the travel with a friend or a vehicle and a vehicle crash, and you're dead. You don't have to be sick. You can be gone down by a crossfire in the streets of Belize, however it might be. Suddenly, but Mary and Martha, they were concerned because their brother, who they loved, had died. And I know that there are families here today who love Tracy. I see your tears. I hear you cry because you love. You know, you don't have to cry. Otherwise, some people say, you don't have to cry. Well, John 11, 25, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. If I should interpret that, Jesus cried. And if Jesus, who is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and life, cried for his friend, what about us crying for our friend and our loved ones? So let, let nobody tell you nothing that are not in the Bible. But Mary and Martha witnessed their brother's death. I don't know how old Lazarus was. I don't know what kind of job he had. I don't know if he sat around, a, around an executive desk. I don't know if he answered phones. I don't know what was his job, but he died. I don't know what is your job today. I don't know where you live, but God knows you by name. God knows every one of us here because he has made us and not we ourselves. So smart, Elix said, we call for a monkey. Who tell him that? God made us. Genesis 1, 26, the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. So Mary and Martha, pondering over their brother's death. It says here in verse 21, but we just a couple of verses and we'll come to a close. Then said Mary unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 
and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Lord, yes, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. When she had so said, she went to her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the master is come and call it for thee. The thought I want to leave with you today, the master is calling for you. Whatever your name is out there, wherever you may have come from out there, today the master is calling for you he's calling for you young lady he's calling for you young man as i said last night remember remember your creator in the days of your youth while the evil days draw an eye remember what god has done for you remember it is god who woke us up this morning remember it is god who put food on our table remember he put clothes on our back. Remember, he put shoes on our feet. Remember, he put breath in our body. Remember. Sometimes we forget so many times. We forget the goodness of God. We forget where he has brought us from. Young people, just like what Tracy did, as, as her husband said, give your life to Jesus Christ. Oh, there has nothing to offer. Just shame, disgrace, and confusion. But Jesus wants to give you life, and life more abundantly. For those of you who are running after riches, for those of you who are running after more lands and more houses and more cars, the Bible says a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. You may think, oh, I have a big house. I have a nice VMAX car. I have money in the bank. I read it earlier. Naked came I into the world, and naked shall I return. Oh, yes. If you open Tracy's hand, you may find a flower in her hand. But there is nothing else you'll find in her hand. No house is going along with her. No money, no more bank account is going with her. Nothing. So, my friend, we brought nothing into this world, and for sure, we'll carry nothing over. The master is calling for you. Before your life ushers into eternity, make sure you give your life to Jesus. The Bible says, if in this life you only have hope, we have the men most miserable. But there's a hope, there's a blessed hope for those who die in Jesus Christ. There will be a resurrection one day. A resurrection, praise God, when Jesus bursts the eastern cloud. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. I don't know where wrong with them church people. They make too much noise. I know like other church, they make too much noise. But one day there'll be a big noise. There'll be a big noise one day. The heaven is going to be open. The trump of God shall sound. The dead in Christ shall arise for us, as I said. So let us be prepared. Let us get ready before time changes into eternity. So listen to this. One of the sisters says, Lord, if you have been here, I know my brother know me and dead. Jesus says, don't worry about that. I am the resurrection. And the life, she shall rise again. To the family of Tracy, she shall rise again. And you want to see her in heaven, you got to live for Jesus. To the brothers and the sisters, the family members, serve God while you have the time. Don't wait until it is too late. Don't wait until you're on a sick bed, can't help yourself. Groaning and complaining, groaning because of pain. Give God your youth. Give God your, your strength while you are young. God is going to bless you. So Mary said, I know that you are the living Christ. So I want to exhort to you today and to encourage you. Yes, Tracy is gone. Maybe some of you are, even in a time of bereavement, maybe you have lost somebody some time back. They have left you. But I want to tell you there is a promise in the Bible that Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
no matter what you may be going through or will go through, Jesus is in there with you. There was one time the disciples, they were in the sea, and praise God, they were, a storm came up, and they were in the boat, and Jesus was sleeping at the bottom of the boat, and they cried unto Jesus, Lord, don't you care that we perish? You don't care that we just suffer here? Jesus says, of course I care. He came up from the bottom of the boat, and he spoke to the wind and the sea, and the wind and the sea obey him. And the disciple says, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. So no matter what storms are in your life today, Jesus can calm the storm. He can still the wind. The wind might be boisterous. The waves might be rough. Your life might be going here and there. But Jesus can steady your life. Some of you might be searching for happiness in the battle. Searching for happiness in other things. You're searching for peace in other things. We can only find peace and happiness and love in Jesus Christ. So this morning, I want to encourage you, as I said, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. This is not the end. The time is coming when all those that are in the, are in the grave will hear his voice. Some will raise so eternal glory. Some will go to eternal destruction. There's a heaven. There's a hell. No purgatory. No limbo. Hell or heaven. If you search the Bible, the 66 books in here, you'll never find purgatory. But you'll find hell. And you'll find heaven. So you make the choice where you are today. May the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. We just want to thank Pastor Matthias Hill with the word of God as he give it to you live and direct. Amen. At this time, we have a congregational hymn, Because He Lives, after which we will have the eulogy read by Dustin um, Cardenas. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. God send his son. They call him Jesus. He saves the Lord. He lands. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I'll bear the blood. Because I know, yes, I know he holds the future. And life is worth a living. I'll see the moon and you want to be and, and feel the pride of joy he brings and feel the pride of joy but
Eulogy, costume, cardio. Oh, all right. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Um, family, friends. Tracy, Trace, as I used to call her, or as you know, friends and family used to call her, Bird, was born September 12, 1992 to wonderful parents, uh, Myrtle Hyde and Fidel Vasquez. Tracy was the third of eight. Um, again, in her family, there were three boys and, sorry, uh, yeah, three boys and five girls. Growing up, um, she went to primary school at St. Vincent Pelote, where she was, you know, always on the honor roll, right? She was an honorable person. Um, you know, she always felt that she had to give 110% in anything that she did. Um, she was she was someone who loved setting goals, loved um, having things to achieve, things to get by and, and, and do, right? Um, she was always striving for more. So, uh, Right around this time, her mom, uh, she went to the States uh, to provide a better life for Tracy and her family. Um, and then her, her grandma actually uh, took, took her in at the age of 10, um, you know, and obviously this was, you know, one of the things where Tracy felt motivated, right? She had to, you know, make everybody proud. And that's exactly what she did. Uh, at the age, sorry, uh, at primary school um, around 2005, she had her first major achievement where she, you know, graduated um, and she, you know, made everybody proud, right? Um, all while, you know, she definitely made God um, a big part of her life, right? Every Sunday, she used to go to Pentecostal church. Um, at night, she used to go to the youth groups. Um, you know, she was always living the way God wanted her to. I saw him stop. So sorry, I'm shaking. That happens a lot. <laughs> um, she was a role model, right? She was an amazing person. Um, whenever we used to speak and talk, she used to always say how her family was the biggest thing in her life. She had her uh, cousins, her sisters, who would always come to her for advice, right? Um, and she never shied away, right? She always used to tell them, to say, and I'll give you anything after all, always make sure to do the right thing, right? Always make sure that you guys put God in your hearts and always do the right thing. She was an inspirational person, um, friends, family, Right, um, those closest to her knows that they used to always spend a lot of time together, um, sleepovers, uh, nights where they used to just relax and, and speak, tell stories, basically bond with everyone around her. Um, and she was and is and always will be an amazing person for them. Um, in September, she attended Sacred Heart High School in San Ignacio and you know, she did that for the remainder or the rest four of her uh, the remainder of uh, her four years there, right? Um, here is where she met some friends, uh, namely Christelle, Carisha, and Shakira. 
Um, and if you know Trace, if anybody knew Trace, Trace was, like I said, always trying to make everyone proud. Apart from just being on the honor roll, um, if she ever had homework, if she ever had something to do, she wouldn't leave it for a last minute. She would always be the first person submitting it, making sure it's done, getting everything done before, you know, and, and not having to worry about that. In 2019, um, she graduated and again, accomplished and achieved a next milestone that she set out for herself. Um, everyone was definitely proud of her accomplishments, of her achievements. Um, later on that year, Tracy decided to take a break and in 20, 2010, uh, she took on a new challenge, right? She enrolled in the University of Belize to basically pursue uh, an associate's degree in business administration, right? Um, like I said, Tris was always there to achieve, to make everyone proud. And in 2015, she actually uh, was successful in her pursuit of her associate's degree. Um, again, this was something that her friends, her personally, and, and everyone around her was definitely proud of. And, uh, you know, it's a next milestone or a next achievement that she set out for herself. Um, Tracy lived with her older brother, Glendine, in Unitedville, right uh, back there. Um, and in her spare time, uh, she had challenges for herself. Namely, in particular, like Isaiah said, uh, she wanted to learn how to cook, how to bake, right, cook and buy, basically. Um, and if you know her, right, she never gave up. I remember when we, we first met for one of my, for one of her birthday, actually, um, I asked her, how do you make this cake, right? Because I don't know how to cook, and she was learning at the time. Um, and she gave me instructions, and if you guys know me, I'm never good at following instructions. <laughs> um, the cake was heavy, and she still ate it, even though I know it didn't taste good because I didn't eat it. <laughs> um, that's just the type of person she was, right? She was loving. She was always there to, to push you to be better. Um, so, like I said, uh, she, you know, pursued and, and started to bake. And if you guys know her friends, family, you, you definitely know her most famous black cake or bread pudding or powder bun, which the first batch of powder bun which she ever gave me wasn't so good, but I still ate it as like paying her back, right, obviously. Um, but yeah, she was always a strong spirit, um, determined, right? Um, after finishing from the University of Belize, she then, you know, went and was in search of a job. Um, and in 2016, uh, sorry, in 2016, that's probably her messing with me right now, by the way. Um, she got a position at the office for Rose where I had the opportunity to meet her. Um, I'll never remember, I'll never forget the first day where she looked at me and all she did was, <laughs> right? But that's Trace. I mean, she's always, you know, someone who, when you see her from afar, it's always, I wonder if I should talk to her. And like I said, I was never good at following instructions, so immediately I knew I had to talk to her. Um, but after getting to know her and, and you know, knowing who she was as a person, um, a person of God, and a, a family person, a friendly person, you know, I never regret, you know, going in and sitting with her in the cafeteria and actually getting on her nerves. Actually, the first time, um, she was like, "Leave me alone, leave me alone," and I was like, "No." So, definitely. Um, nothing but fond, amazing memories there, right? Um, and like I said, she was always a family person. Um, I, I never forget Tracy and a cup that her brother actually gave her. Um, I used to always ask her, Tracy, I didn't know you loved coffee so much. And she used to tell me like, I don't love it. It's just the cup, right? It's the memory, it's the feeling, it's the having of that. She, you know, was amazing um, to say the least. Um, apart from that, though, I think, you know, Tracy was always so organized, right? Um, she even have seasonings on her shelf stacked and labeled and in order. And if you know me, 
you know, that was always something that I used to make jokes and clown her for, like I wasn't organized. And for her to be that way, that was, it was always something new, refreshing, but you know, she was always proud of it. Um, you know, looking and, and, and being with her, Tracy was always a very down to earth person. Um, like I said, she was always put together and she had the easiest grocery list, pretty much orange juice, bagels, mushroom in a can, and four in a can bag. Always, right? <laughs> um, her favorite artist was Bob Marley. Um, namely, her favorite song was uh, One Love. Right? And um, like I said, she was a very outgoing and spirited person. Um, so in 2019, right, she met the love of her life. Isaiah Green, um, I never forget the conversation between us because we were we were very close. Like we used to talk, and um, she used to show me messages, right? And I used to always tell her like, "Trace, you you sure? Trace, you sure?" And she used to always tell me like, "There's this feeling here that you just can't explain." And you know me uh, as a friend, I used to always look out for her. Like I felt like I was kind of her bigger, smaller brother, right? Um, but from the way it developed from the start, all the way through the way she talked, acted, you know, that told me everything I needed to know, that Isaiah was the one, right? And as long as he made her happy and he was there for her, that was pretty much my consent, right? Um, I always remember she always used to say, that uh, Isaiah would go to the ends of the earth for her, and I'm pretty sure he did on a couple of accounts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he literally came on a ship just to see her for how long, Isaiah? Eight hours. Eight hours, right? Yeah, exactly. And and like I said, right, she knew from the start, um, and I'm glad that I also found out. So thank you, Isaiah, for that. Um, in 2019, like I said, she did meet the love of her, of her life from United States, where you guys just fell madly in love. Um, she even took a trip to the States um, to spend some quality time with you. And fortunately, because of the lockdown protocols due to COVID, she had to overstay her time, right? Um, obviously, talking to her when she was there was nothing but happiness and love, and I knew she was taken care of. Um, so right then and there, they both married the they both made their vows to God and ultimately became united under him, right, under his protection. Um, they both lived a fairy tale life, um, but to Isaiah, I, I know that it was more than just a, a fairy tale, right? It was like living in a dream. Um, and I know he used to always refer to her as uh, a miracle and a gem. Um, and then while being there, she actually found out that she was pregnant, right? Uh, both of them were <laughs> beyond words, overjoyed. Uh, like maybe Isaiah can say for himself how he felt at the time. But I know when she told me, I was happy but speechless. <laughs> so, um, and you know, after that time, um, after she got the all clear and she returned back home to Belize, um, he had to stay back, obviously, to to continue working, right? But they had big, big plans. They always had plans. Tracy always had plans. Um, and then she continued, you know, pretty much her motherhood along with the support of her husband, her family, and her friends around her. Um, she then later found out that she was going to have a beautiful baby girl. Um, and then finally, the day came where, you know, on Thursday, May 13th, 2021, at exactly 6.30 p.m., she welcomed her beautiful uh, daughter, Zariah Michelle Green, into the world. She was so excited to welcome her. Um, you know, she she thank you. She always used to tell me that there will be one day where she'll have a child because we used to always joke about it and I'm afraid to have children. Like I can't I can't have the next world have the next me running around, you know? So that was kind of my take on it. But Trace was always excited, happy. Um, and she was kind of that person that used to push me 
so change my mindset on that so when she told me she was pregnant like overjoyed to the point where tears were in my eye i was so happy for her so um like i said around that same time uh nobody knew that tragedy tragedy would hit right um her beautiful life came to an end at approximately 9:30 p.m. um the lord said it was her time he called her home and we will never understand why the lord took her home took such a beautiful person with her uh all we know is that tracy was dedicated um she was the head on type of person um and she had no regrets right um she always gave her 110% for everything she did um to everyone she was organized um cheerful right she had so much love in her heart so much love that she gave to each and every one of us um she was a straight up person uh one of her many quotes and the one that really stuck true for knowing her for 5 plus years was if you truly want something you got to work for it right don't wait for it to fall in your lap just get up and get it do it right um and i i know that this was a testament to her um everybody knew that she was a living testament to that we used to always joke around um how we used to get love handles together right and i always used to say that one of these days i'll do something about it i, I never did you guys can see um but she did right she loved going to the gym um hard worker and an amazing person um tracy will be sadly missed by her parents grandfather uncle aunties dogs nieces nephews a host of all other relatives um friends coworkers at the office schools um may her soul rest in peace and rise in per- perpetual glory um and again trace we all love you thank you guys Thank you very much, Dustin. You know, at this time in our program, we have um, special comments by family and friends. I know we want you to be bold, and um, we want to at least a minute. One minute we're going to give you. So, if you want to, if you have something to say about Tracy, please at this time the, the floor is open, and we want to limit the time to one minute, please. So come up now. The time, the, f- the floor is open. Come right up. Come right up. Come right up. Everybody wants. All right, so it's time for everybody. My goodness, my girl. She told me one day. You will never told me, but told my sister. Oh, so. I used to work in Elba first. Four years. One day, got close now, and she told my sister, and she told me, said, "Dad, whatever you need, come to me." I told her, "Dad, I don't need kids. I said, because I'm young." She said, "No, I need to get something. I don't know. I'm young." So I went to my sister with me one day, and she told me, "Said, said, Dad." She really said, "Baby, love, you are you going to work?" I told her that one of these days I get back on my feet. I have money, but money I have. She told me, "Said, Dad, you gotta work. So I need something. Give me back something." She told me the day I passed, right? Like, I gave what I had to her. So she told me, Dad, I want to see you. But the clothes I in, I can't want to see her. I work out with a double. My clothes is bleed up, the pants. So I told her, I had to go home and change that. So I told her, I'm sorry. How is that? My son in law. I was just talking about it. Yesterday I come from work. Mr. Well and his 
this month. Anybody else? Good morning, everybody. Just want to give God thanks um, for this moment, no? Like Pastor said, the, um, the word is not for KC, it's for us who are alive right now. So I just thank God for this moment. Um, it's sad for the family, for a sudden one like that, but Life goes on, no? So I just want to give God thanks and praise for this day for everyone who takes the opportunity to come out today. Nobody else? Hello, family. Um, first of all, I want to say, give y'all all my condolences. I am a U.S. mother. It was a pleasure for me to get to know you guys this morning. I have a daughter, but she became my daughter. Um, we used to sit up when she was there visiting, she used to sit up there, and we used to have our talk, and we would be talking to, talk about God, talk about life, laugh, we had our time. But one thing I got to say about Tracy, as I'm hearing from everybody else, one thing I do know is that she loved God, and she loved people. Okay, can y'all hear me now? Okay, she loved God. And she loved people. Now, while she was there, um, you know, I've been around for, I'm not ashamed to tell my age. I'm 55. Okay. But when she came here, she started cooking, and I'm starting liking those meals. I'm like, girl, I thought I could cook, but whoo. Girl, you got to teach me some of these things here. So uh, she did that. And also, um, the way that I've seen her love expressed for my son. I've been married twice. But the love I've seen her express to my son, I've never seen it before. And that made me even love her even more to show how much that people matter. And she was willing to give up, you know, give, give up herself, even to the point of giving birth as her life was taken away. So, like I just said, you know, it was a gift and it's a purpose for all things, but that's what the Lord says, and I'm holding on to that. So I just want to say, you know, I really do love her, and I enjoyed the time that we had, and I'm glad God was able to lend her to us for this time and moment, but I don't have a greater purpose. So it just holds true to that, that it's a purpose for life with no regret. And even with this miracle right here, I have always prayed that God put an anointing on my grandkids, and I believe she's going to be the one that he's going to use it. So I just want to come to this because the Holy Spirit come to my heart, and I just want to leave you with the scripture that says, God saves the crushed in spirit, and he heals the broken heart. So go to today. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more person, one last. Good morning, everyone. Um, my friends and I, um, from the Arctic Gurus, we just like to present this picture collage of Tracy's memories with us, five years plus, and there's many more, but these are the ones we picked out from some of 
with her close friend. And we'd like to present to, to you Isaiah. That when, as the baby grows along, you will show her how wonderful her mom was. Thank you. Can I get a better hand of applause, please? At this time, we have a song, a special song by Melody Perez. Thank you. Um, I have a special song that I love, and every time I listen to this song, I sang it over and over in my head, and I didn't know if if I would have. to Didn't know today would be your last That I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back 
through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming you're not really gone as long as I believe there will be another angel around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me and i will hold on tight it's not my place to question only god knows why i'm just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight Always made my troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me when I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Well, God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel Around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me, and I will hold on tight. It's not my place to question, only God knows why. I'm just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight, singing hallelujah. So we have a closing song. Bibs, you know, answer. You, well, I guess that with Bibs, you know, and well, I. I look to you. After which we'll um, be having the viewing of the body. Just give us a couple moments. 
As I lay me down, heaven hear me now, I'm lost without a cause, after giving it my all. Okay, sorry. Um, this song that will be played will be played while the viewing of the body will be taking place. Um, at the time of the viewing of the body, we'll ask that you give the family members, especially um, their last to view. So we'll be viewing from the, from the rear or from the back or from the side. The family members are the last one to view the body. So please give them their respect in regards to that. Um, viewing of the body. So the song that we play is I Look to You, and then um, the viewing of the body. Uh, could I ask one of the pallbearers or? Yes, I thank you. So um, lift it up. And so we begin to view the body. From there, we'll be moving. We'll be having a thank you by Devin Spain after the viewing of the body, and then we'll be moving on to the burial site. So um, if you can, without a cost, after giving it my all, winter storm the of the body come, now begins. And I can buy Anybody want to come in and view the body? The family members After are the last. Thanks for your cooperation. Who on earth can I turn to? I look to you. I look to you. After all, my strength is gone. In you I can be strong. I look to you. Oh, I look to you. Yeah. And when melodies are gone, and you I hear a song, I look to you. To lose my breath, there's no more fighting left, sinking to rise no more, searching for that open door. And every road that I've taken led to my regret, and I don't know if I'm going. To do my lips, my head. I look to you. I look to you. Yeah. And with all my strength is gone. And you, I can be strong. I look to you. Here 
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here are through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold When you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your days down here are through, there's a place out there for people like you.
What <laughs> On behalf of the, the Vasquez family, the Hyde family, they would like to extend a great appreciation to everyone who have chipped in, whether it was by a hug, a text message, a phone call, or any way they reach out to them. They just want to thank you from the bottom of their heart, and may the Lord bless you and guide you for all that you have done for them. So thank you very much and may God bless you. And I ask the Lord to wrap his arms around the family and give them the strength and the comfort to get through this very rough time. 
to take their time to heal. It won't be today, tomorrow. May they all grieve in their own time. And thank you all and God bless. Um, could you get the power bearers standing by? We'll be moving to the cemetery in the next few minutes. Um, power bearers, Henry Hyde, Earl Vasquez, Ernest Vasquez, Jose Guzman, Alexander Vasquez, and Wilbert Vasquez. Just stand by. Um,
Henry. I 
is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He played also as a shadow and continued not. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom we seek for secure, but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord, most holy, most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not in the bitter pain of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the heart, the secrets of our heart. Set not thy merciful ears to our prayer, and spare us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God, his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, Tracy Hyde Green, he therefore not commit her body to the ground.